Welcome to the Great Basin Seasonal Outlook for May through August. Prescribed burning is still in full force across the Great Basin, especially across Idaho and Utah and also parts of western Nevada due to our spring conditions which have been cooler bringing some precipitation across the region also allowing all this prescribed burning to continue into May. Over the last one to two weeks, we've seen continued wetter conditions, especially over the eastern two-thirds of Nevada into much of Utah, central and eastern Idaho and Wyoming, and this has been well above normal over the last week. Over the last two weeks, this precipitation still averages out to above normal in many of these areas. Some of the drier spots have still been along the Sierra front up into northwest Nevada and over parts of central and western Idaho. Over the last 30 days, we've seen near to above normal temperatures across the Great Basin, and precipitation has been generally above normal over western and northern Nevada, even parts of southern Nevada, and then spotty parts of Utah and Idaho. Drier spots over the last 30 days have been eastern Utah. Since the beginning of the water year, October 1st, we have seen above normal precipitation over southern Idaho, northern Nevada, and northern Utah specifically. Other areas over the southern half of the Great Basin have been below normal. However, if we look at the last several months since late January, you can see all areas of the Great Basin really have seen above normal precipitation, with just the exception of a couple dry spots near the Colorado border and over parts of central Utah and up into Idaho. But for the most part, we've continued to see wet conditions. This has translated to a good snowpack this year. We were generally near to above normal most of the season across the Great Basin. The exception was central Idaho, which was largely below normal much of the winter and has now dropped back down to below normal again. Other areas of the Great Basin continue to remain near to just above normal. Again, due to our spring that has not been overly warm, we've seen periods of cold fronts move through, so this has allowed the snowpack to melt gradually, and that will likely continue at least going through the first half of May. So that was last or this past winter. What about two winters ago? Because certainly two winters have an impact going into the fire season with respect to moisture. So obviously last year we had a very heavy snowpack, a very wet winter. Some areas saw historic amounts of snowpack. And going into late April, we were well above normal with snowpack across all of the Great Basin and really much of the West. Obviously this year we have not seen anywhere near as much snow, but still a good amount. So we have had two wet winters in a row. And looking at the precipitation shows a similar story with wet conditions for the last two winters and springs across the Great Basin. So why does this matter whether we get precipitation in the winter or spring across the Great Basin? Well, this image on the left shows where we need precipitation during that time period to get fine fuel growth in the spring going into the fire season. These areas in orange, so really much of the Great Basin with the exception of southern and eastern Utah and parts of eastern Nevada, really need precipitation during the winter and spring to perpetuate fine fuel growth. And you can see obviously this last winter and spring so far, we've had that precipitation where we have needed it for the fine fuel growth. We've also seen soil moistures increase significantly with the recent moisture, especially over central and western Nevada, up into northern Nevada and northern Utah, and we are seeing higher soil moistures down south near Red Rock. We are also seeing some of those soil moistures start to emerge up in southern Idaho. So really prime conditions for fine fuel growth heading into the next several weeks. Drought conditions are largely non-existent across the Great Basin, with the exception of the far south and eastern side. That's, those are areas where drought is just beginning to develop, and we may see those areas enhance a little bit with drought going into the fire season. But really, other areas of the Great Basin will largely remain out of drought going into the fire season. The only area to watch will be parts of central Idaho, and we could see some drought develop there going into the summer. The drought has changed quite a bit over the last two years. Specifically, the last year, we transitioned out of moderate to severe drought in many areas to obviously no drought. But really two years ago, we were deeper into drought with more exceptional and extreme drought conditions across the Great Basin. So we've really needed these two years of wet conditions to really pull us out of drought because we were in such a deficit. So what does this mean for the Great Basin? This just says Nevada here, but it's really representative of many areas of lower elevations in the Great Basin. So for ease of time, I'm just showing one chart for the low elevations. You can see the areas of black boxes with drought showing where we see above normal or well above normal acreage burned as a whole. And you can see those for Nevada and again, many areas of southern 
or of lower elevations, showing those years happen in years of non-drought and really have never happened in years where we've been deep in significant drought. So again, that's just another indicator that we are possibly moving into burning more acreage this year and having a busy season being completely out of drought for the state. For our higher elevations, showing the same schematic, but looking at the higher elevation fires, I've posted a few of those down here below of our more significant fires across the Great Basin. And these are specifically Nevada, but you can see these usually happen in years of deeper drought. So again, we're not really entering that at this point. Obviously, we're coming out of our prolonged drought, so that does ease our concerns a bit for most of the higher elevations. So what areas really are, are most at risk across the Great Basin? If we are now out of drought, we've seen a lot of precipitation, what areas may see the most fine fuel growth? This is a carryover schematic from Matt Reeves, who we've been working a lot with for fine fuel loading. This is showing carryover from what we had in 2023, which will be coming over into the 2024 season. So you can see areas of concern are certainly southern Idaho, northeast Nevada, parts of northern Nevada, and into northern Utah. This does not show the eastern side of Utah, but there are some, there will be some grass growth over towards the Uinta Basin. But really it's this the central belt across um, northern Utah, northern Nevada, and southern Idaho that are most concerning. So how are the fuels looking right now? Uh, right now we are not seeing any critical fuels. Everything is pretty much in green up across the Great Basin, uh, but we are seeing the drying from south to north, which is normal for this time of year. We're likely seeing some curing over southern areas, but for the most part, the northern half to two thirds of the Great Basin is actively in green up. So our 100 and 1000 hour fuel moisture is again, not critical yet. So looking at the future now, going into our predictions, El Nino, we've been in for some time. This schematic just shows different models indicating the trend of forecast sea surface temperature, which is how El Nino and La Nina are indicated. And we are definitely in a cooling trend, so we'll likely enter more into neutral conditions, this area in white going into the fire season, and then could see a return of La Nina by the fall. What this means for us is still an active weather pattern as we transition out of El Nino. We'll still see storm systems moving through the area. And going into early May, we're entering into another period where we will see storms, again, tracking across the Great Basin every few days. This will bring an increased period of wind for the first half of May, but also additional amounts of precipitation. And this, these are forecast precipitation just for the first week of May. Going into the next, next week of May, the first half of the month, still looking at that cooler, wetter pattern. Again, those storm systems will continue to move through. However, they will bring some pretty windy conditions at times. So we could see some upticks in fire potential in our dead and dormant grasses, even while green up is occurring. And also down south in some of those areas that are in the curing process, could see some upticks in fire potential due to the wind if we get starts. Looking at the weather for the next four months, the top row is temperature and we are looking at again still more periods of warm and dry and cool and wetter going through May and June. So again we will see it looks like warmer conditions with dry weather the later half of May but then some storm systems may return in June before we really see that trend to the warmer drier summer weather. Precipitation showing that same pattern. We will likely see near normal conditions, especially since we might have some wetter conditions early in May, but then drier conditions later in May. And then some storms still at times in June, but then drier conditions or a more drier signature emerging for July and August. So this plays into our monsoon forecast. It is very difficult to forecast the monsoon this early, but right now the models have been pointing um, to generally cooler conditions along the west coast, which is shown in this temperature schematic in the top left, and then drier conditions for the Great Basin. So for us, we've seen wet monsoons the last two years, at least for parts of the Great Basin, and it's now looking like we might see a drier monsoon, which again is concerning, especially if we do have well above normal grass loading in some areas, windier conditions early in the season, and then if we don't see some of that moisture, we could see greater potential for dry lightning or just a greater potential for fire risk going into July and August. So putting everything together, our, out, our outlook for May, just showing normal conditions, again with the exception of those upticks in fire potential on windy days, which would not be uncommon for the spring, uh, that will be something to watch on a localized event driven basis, but otherwise normal conditions as we'll continue through green up. And then by June, if we do see especially those windy conditions in early May with drier conditions in southern Nevada, We'll likely see these areas cure in the south pretty quickly during May, and we could see some increases to fire potential, especially around Red Rock, 
uh, with some higher fuel loading that's been reported down there in June. As we move into July, we should see some moisture work its way up into the far south, so that may mitigate some of the concerns. But our main focus going into July and August will be southern Idaho, northwest Utah, northern Nevada, and parts of west central Nevada. Again, this is where we're targeting for the greatest potential for higher fuel loading with carryover from last year and our new growth from this year. At, towards August, I do not have any above normal indicated for central Idaho, but as far as higher elevation, that would be the area that I'd be watching for later in the fire season since snowpack was below normal most of the season and that snow will likely melt off pretty quickly. We will need to watch those areas again as we go generally later into the fire season. But other higher elevation areas being out of drought and seeing still above normal snowpack probably will see more of a normal season. Yeah, that concludes our seasonal webcast for the month. Check back next month for the latest update.